The state's ongoing budget shortfalls have had one unexpected effect. Even though the next election is just under two years away, it's clear that the state's budget woes are forcing people who want to be the next governor to launch their campaigns early. While no one has officially announced their intentions to run, the expected frontrunners are already well on the way to positioning themselves for the race. The 2018 race for governor began just hours after Governor Fallon's State of the State speech. After rolling out a plan that included a massive sales tax increase, the governor's chief budget negotiator and secretary of finance, Preston Dorflinger, decided to take political swipes at the House Minority Leader, Representative Scott Inman, who was widely expected to run for governor in 2018. I'm particularly interested in any budget uh, that Minority Leader uh, Inman might like to present. The House Minority Leader has made no secret of how he wants to fix the state's budget crisis, and in reacting to Dorflinger's comments this week, Representative Inman decided to open up on the top Republican expected to run for governor. Week after week, our caucus has called for her to restore those revenues that she helped cut, that Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb helped cut over the last decade, but they refused to do it. They refused to admit that they have been wrong. That was actually the second occasion that Representative Edmund had taken aim at Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb. He did it the first time a week earlier, again while discussing the budget with reporters, and after the Lieutenant Governor had resigned as a member of the Governor's Cabinet because of her plan to dramatically expand sales taxes. I don't fault him for that because I don't support her tax plan either, but I don't sit on her Cabinet. I haven't worked to try to lead this state with her as a Lieutenant Governor for the last six or seven years like he has. Arnold Hamilton is editor of the Oklahoma Observer and has covered the state capitol for years. It's underway and it is hot and heavy. There's no question about it. This is earlier, though, than I can remember really in a long time. Hamilton says Inman is already on the offensive because when the lieutenant governor resigned from the cabinet, it opened up a real opportunity for Inman to brand his opponent. A lot of people, I suspect had no idea that the lieutenant governor was a member of the governor's cabinet. So that ties right into Scott Inman's contention that it's the foul and lamb budget. Patrick McWiggin is editor of Capital Beat OK and a conservative political commentator. I've spent a career watching people knife uh, the person they're working with or for and I thought Lamb was pretty stand up about it. Now did the governor's race maybe have something to do with it? That's quite possible. And it's not just Representative Inman and Lieutenant Governor Lamb that are jockeying for position. Hi folks, I'm Gary Richardson. On February the 21st, I announced the formation of my exploratory committee for governor of Oklahoma. Gary Richardson eyeing the governor's race for 2018 is interesting because if he runs as an independent, he could be a spoiler for the Republicans, something he's done before. The year that it was Brad Henry, Steve Largent, and Richardson, a lot of people uh, in Republican circles blame Richardson for giving the governorship uh, to Brad Henry. So I'm going to be interested to see what his final determination is. But this time, it appears Richardson will run as a Republican. By embracing conservative principles and Republican values, with your help, I know we can make Oklahoma a better place to live. And there's at least one other name still in the mix. For some time, people have been urging former Attorney General Drew Edmondson to get back into politics. And a draft Drew movement for 2018 is already underway. He continues to be involved in some very important issues, particularly environmental issues and the like, and uh, he's a known quantity. Arnold Hamilton believes that state government's seemingly never-ending budget shortages pushed everything forward for 2018, and it will most likely dominate the course of the campaign. We're in dire economic straits in this state, so it's probably not surprising that we have the cast of characters coming out and, and, and already positioning themselves. And it will be a very expensive campaign with estimates ranging already in excess of $3 million for each of the top candidates. I think it's going to be an expensive election, and even the smallest spender of those four will have some money available. Just how the legislature deals with the budget for this fiscal year, which has already run headfirst into a revenue failure, and the $900 million shortfall for fiscal year 2018, 
will likely be impacted by the politics of an election which is still 20 months away.